Hi there. Welcome to another video in my series on the geometric distribution. Now, in this video, if we're given that the random variable x is distributed as a geometric distribution with parameter p, then it can be shown that e of x, the mean or expected value of x, is equal to 1 divided by p. Now, I say it can be shown. If you want to see how this result is proved, you'll see it in a later video in this series. But for now, all I want to do is run through a couple of examples which use this concept. Now, in the first example, we're asked how many times would you expect to throw a fair six-sided die before a six is scored? And this is very straightforward. The second example, though, is a little bit more demanding, where we've got x being distributed as a geometric distribution with parameter p, and the probability of x being less than or equal to 2 is 5 ninths. Find e of x. Now, if you'd like to have a go at these at this stage, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, you can either fast forward quickly just to check out your solutions, or I'll take you slowly through these in the form of tutorial. Okay? Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So, for this first one, how many times would you expect to throw a fair six sided die before a six is scored? Well, I've shown you that this type of situation in a previous video can be modelled by a geometric distribution. And if we defined a random variable x, we could say let x be the random variable, the number of throws to get a 6, where x is distributed geometrically with parameter 1 sixth, that being the probability of throwing a 6. So p is equal to 1 sixth. So when it comes to working out e of x, we've got therefore e of x will be equal to 1 divided by p, 1 divided by 1 sixth, and that's going to be equal to 6. So we can expect 6 throws before a 6 is scored. Now in this second example, I said to you that this would be a bit more demanding. If x follows a geometric distribution, then parameter p and the probability of x being less than or equal to 2 is 5 ninths, find e of x. Well, for this one, let's start with working out what the probability of x being less than or equal to 2 would be. Well, that means that x could be equal to 1, or it could be equal to 2. So we could put the probability of x equaling 1 plus the probability that x equals 2. Now, the probability of x equaling 1 getting a success at the first attempt must be equal to p. Now, for the probability x equaling 2, probability of getting your first success on the second attempt will be that you get a failure first of all, call that q, and then we get a success. So we'd multiply that by p. Now remember that q, probability of failure, must be 1 minus p. So we've got this p here plus 1 minus p times the p we've got here. And if I expand the brackets, then we've got p plus p minus p squared. Okay, so we've got p minus p squared there. And if we simplify this, this is going to be 2p minus p squared. Now we know that the probability of x being less than or equal to 2 we're told is equal to 5 ninths. So therefore, what we've got here is that 2p minus p squared must be equal to 5 ninths. So if I just border this off here, then we know that if we multiply both sides by 9 now, we must therefore have 9 times 2p is going to be 18p minus 9 times p squared, so that's 9p squared, equals 5. And I've just got a quadratic equation here that I need to solve. Now if I add 9p squared to both sides and subtract 18p from both sides, 
we're therefore going to get 9p squared minus 18p plus the 5 equals 0. And this will factorise. It will factorise down to two factors. OK, we'll put it like that, equals 0. That will be a 3p and a 3p here. And then we're going to have, say, minus 1 here and minus 5 here. OK, check that out. If you expand it, you'll get that. So therefore, each of these factors would equal 0. So therefore, 3p minus 1 would equal 0. Or the other factor, 3p minus 5, would equal 0. And if 3p minus 1 equals 0, adding 1 to both sides, 3p would equal 1. Divide by 3, we therefore have p equaling 1 third. Or, if we take 3p minus 5 equals 0, if you add 5 to both sides, 3p equals 5 divide by 3 and you end up with p equaling 5 thirds. Which one of these two answers though do we take for p? Well we know that p is a probability and it must lie between 0 and 1. So since p must be greater than 0 but less than 1, then p must equal 1 third. And if that's the case, therefore e of x must be equal to 1 divided by p, 1 divided by 1 third. 1 divided by 1 third is 3. OK? So I hope that's giving you an idea then how we can uh, work with the expected value of x, e of x, then from a geometric distribution. e of x equal to 1 over p.